Um, my name is Patricia de Montford. I'm um, a lecturer in the History of Art Department in the University of Glasgow and um, I'm also a research curator for Whistler Studies um, at the Hunterian um, and I'm responsible in that capacity for the Whistler collection. I'm a curator uh, of the Whistler and Nature Touring Exhibition, um, which um, started its journey at Compton Verney in Warwickshire, then moved to the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, and then finally um, to the Lane uh, Art Gallery in Newcastle, before coming back to Glasgow, uh, where we will be staging the show, a slightly enlarged version of the show next year. Um, I came to the exhibition um, from the point of view of an interest in Whistler and the 18th century and 18th century landscape. Um, I was asked to do the show at Compton Verney in the first instance, an 18th century house in a capability brown landscape. Um, so I started reading up about um, the 18th century, about capability brown, um, and discovered um, Brown's importance um, as a kind of representative figure, development of the productive landscape, the, the notion of a productive landscape, a landscape which could be both beautiful and productive. And that led me to thinking about uh, Whistler and Whistler's depiction of the Thames, uh, a subject that he painted and he drew over 40 years um, from uh, much of it from his uh, two houses he lived in successfully at Lindsay Row, now Cheney Walk in Chelsea. He spent uh, 40 years painting, drawing Battersea Bridge um, and um, the uh, embankment um, which was under construction um, for much of the 1860s into the early 1870s. So Whistler was observing London and the Thames at a time of great change, great technological and uh, physical uh, change, There's a lot of physical changes taking place in the city. Um, and that led me um, to think about Whistler and his role in depicting what um, in, a, in a late 19th century sense was a productive landscape, a landscape of warehouses, of wharves, of uh, foundries, of um, timber yards, um, all the, 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 the sort of nuts and bolts of uh, industry. Whistler came from a family with deep roots in early 19th century industry. His father um, was a, uh, a military engineer, a topographical engineer, educated at West Point Military Academy um, in the, near New York uh, in the US. His uncle, William Gibbs McNeil, who was brother of his mother, Anna McNeil, was also an engineer. They were friends at West Point. Um, and Whistler himself went to West Point Military Academy, uh, had a short-lived uh, career there um, and never graduated due to, um, as he put it, deficiencies in chemistry. Um, but whilst Whistler was at uh, West Point, um, he learned the skills of a topographical engineer and these included skills in watercolour, in map making um, and there was a drawing master there called Robert Weir um, who um, had connections with the Royal Academy in London um, and there was a strong, in, in other words there was a strong um, artistic training there for um, Whistler, a strong grounding, um, not only in um, the skills of engineering uh, and engineering science, um, but also in drawing, in painting. Um, they were the essential components, really, of um, a, the curriculum for an aspiring um, military topographical engineer office of the officer class, as Whistler was um, at that time. Whistler's father, uh, George Washington Whistler um, died young, um, died uh, he, uh, during the cholera epi ep epidemic in St. Petersburg where he was working at the time as chief engineer on the 
uh, for the Tsar uh, on the Moscow to St. Petersburg Railway. And in one of his last letters to Whistler before his death in April 1849, he advised Whistler, he says, and I quote, you cannot well go amiss with industry in pursuit of good habits of method and the study of any branch of education, your natural inclination or taste for the fine arts. If it is not allowed to become too poetical will certainly be of much service to you in any profession connected with the arts and sciences. So cultivate it then, my dear boy, in connection with mathematical delineations and studies. Cultivate now as an artist, if you please, an acquaintance with and a taste for works of art, useful works, and depend upon it, the study of sciences with a view to practical application of some works will be a delight instead of a task for you. Well, in other words, Major Whistler is advising him, his son, to find a steady profession, but um, by all means continue his art, but in his spare time. Um, one of the arguments that's presented uh, by the exhibition is that there is a direct lineage um, between Whistler's experience as an apprentice map maker at the US Coastal Survey um, and his later, um, the, the advent of his, his nocturnes um, and images of uh, Thames bridges um, and um, embankments um, in the 18, from the 18, late 1860s onwards.